Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia, thank you for watching. Today's episode is entitled, How to Fight Fair in Marriage. That is not fair, because I don't even have a weapon. You do, right there. So anyway, can we talk? That's your weapon right there. Okay, so Derek has all these props. Today. Yeah, I use it. Pull that thing out, bam. That was y'all bring. Yeah. That's what we bring? Yes. Women don't want to fight. No, no, I'm talking about, no, they don't want to fight, but when you do fight, and we're not talking about where the women don't, don't want to fight. fight. It's usually the last resort, right, women? But we're talking we're about- We're lovers, you, not fighters. But when you do fight. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't belong in war, but you know, that's a whole other political debate issue. But when you- How are you changing the pad when you're on the war field? I don't understand that, okay. I don't know if we're going to get through this vlog yet. <sighs> we're talking about how to fight fair. We're not talking about whether women want to fight or not. We're talking about how to fight fair. We're talking about when you get into a fight, what do you do? When you get into a fight, what happens is this. Females, wives bring a knife, which means that we bring a gun. We got one bullet and it's gone. Which, which is more deadly? And it's one bullet and we're gone. But and which is more deadly, the gun or the knife? We bring a, we have one bullet and it's gone. When a woman has a knife, they can slice us up back and forth, down and out, in and out. That's what we're talking about. Okay, most guns have more than one bullet. So I'm not going with that theory. And I'm sorry, because that's who you married. <laughs> As you can see from the picture, I'm completely overwhelmed and becoming frustrated. And looking at Sonia's face, she's really enjoying this conversation. So what does that picture tell you? Men and women have a different perspective on how we communicate, which can lead to a fight. Now, because I'm frustrated and overwhelmed, what I'm doing at that very moment, I'm thinking about, one, is her intent to make me feel frustrated? No, it's not. That's just who she is. She's a Bayesian Brooklyn sister who is sanguine, and she loves to talk but at times it becomes overwhelming for me. So if that's the case, then I have to take a deep breath. Thus me holding my head, counting to 15 or 20, and realizing that that's not her intent, but the conversation still is overwhelming for me. So men, if you fall into that category where your wife is verbally superior and her intent is not to hurt or harm, then you have to figure out a way how to cope with that. Count 15, take a deep breath, but then re-engage in having that process where you can continue the conversation without you being frustrated. So how to fight fair in marriages. Whatever we bring, we bring something that's dangerous. We bring something that's gonna hurt somebody else. We bring those things based on how we grew up, how we used to fight. We bring our words, and, and again, most women bring their words. To me, words means a sword. Words mean that you cut like a knife. Your mouth is like a double-edged sword. It's true, because I literally so, triggered Derek so three that's times. So that's why she has the knife in her hand, or the, the samurai sword in her hand, actually. It's not a knife. And so that's, that's my point, is that knowing what you bring to a marriage, knowing what you bring to a marriage, can really destroy the marriage. You have to realize that I can't bring the smart mouth. And sometimes it's brought on purpose. Sometimes it's brought to actually slice and dice because women are more equipped verbally to slice us. They are, they're, they're, they're verbally capable. We talked about in the last episode uh, or the episodes before how women have their verbal centers cross over, ours do not. Have you overlooked giving your husband's confirmation because you're so busy with, your, with our two verbal centers, one on the left and one on the right? Are you so busy already formulating a response that you haven't even given confirmation to right. what your husband said? Because if he's anything like Derek, he needs confirm confirmation to move on. And so many times, because we have two verbal centers, we gave confirmation in our heads, right, but, <laughs> but you, we didn't give it verbally. And it, and it's, <laughs> 
and it's overwhelming. And I, I need to talk to the minimum. I'm talking to wives. It's very overwhelming when you use 20,000 words within two minutes. And so when we get into a fight, they have the capabilities of being superior in what they say and how they say it, which then perpetuates us to do something. We have it, we don't have to use it. We don't want to use it, but when we're pushed to that point of the verbal, uh, the verbal combat, men are not equipped so we then come out with the gun. You become blazing. the Hulk. That's become, what you become. Yeah, we become the Hulk, and we become come out with the guns blazing. So we want to talk about how to fight fair. You know, this is not about what we bring because we bring stuff. Mm -hmm. Sonia brought her verbal skills to cut me and slice me. But you know, here's the thing. Do you know that there is an Achilles heel, meaning that sensitive part of your ankle? Figuratively, there's a sensitive part of each of us that can literally be triggered by what another person says or does. So the fighting sometimes isn't even intentional. Sometimes the, the fighting is because that person, that's how they've been taught to fight or communicate, I should say, not fight. And because they communicate it in a way that triggers the other person's Achilles heel, then they're getting a bullet or a knife at them and they didn't even know why. And that was Derek and me when we first got married. I would say stuff that wasn't even supposed to be taken as a smart alley comment. But he took it as one because he felt something. I think it's natural in you to be smart. So whether it's supposed to or not, you still have that natural innate ability just to be smart. Like because you could, Yeah, because of your culture, because of your background. So I don't know if it, sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes it's just how you grew up. But can you, can you relate to the fact that there's, it might be a temperament thing because Sai, she's a 15 year old. She has a smart mouth and I don't think it's because of how she grew up. I think she was born that way. I think that, I think the apple came from the tree. This is the alphabet backwards from the McCullums. Z Y X W V U T S R Q P O N M L K J I H G L E D C B A. Did you say L? <laughs> I didn't say ten. I can count to ten backwards. Oh, he doesn't know. Oh, that was a little treat. That was a little something, something. So I'll get it when she turns six. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Last song. Last song. How about this? You tell me what's for dinner, then I'll leave you alone. I told you I asked to shop. That is a shop. I still got one more time. It's probably. What you gonna do? I, I don't know. Because I'm not scared of you. <laughs> I'm not scared of you. You should be. <laughs> well, what about our <laughs> other daughters? I mean, I think, they I didn't think, have. They don't have a smart mouth. I, I think they don't have it because they have it's other characteristics in them. I think that part of it comes from the tree. I think that's part of it. It is a temperament issue. I think a big part of it is that it comes from uh, how they grew up in the culture and how they bring it. Well, I mean, to your point, temperaments are inherited. And Sai does have one of my strong temperament traits, which is the sanguines. And sanguines usually do have a lot to say. And they can seem to be smart aleck, but they're typically not trying to be. They have a lot to say. Well, that's my second temperament, and that's size first. But to your point, she could have inherited that from a temperament perspective. I agree. I think, I think the most important thing is for a person to recognize that I got a smart mouth. But I said I that. But I sometimes a, it's not intended to be a smart mouth. Right. We're, saying, mean, we're saying the same yeah. thing. Being able to say, so if you have a smart mouth, being able to say, I got a smart mouth. If you're a wife who has a smart mouth, Say I got a smart mouth. If you're a husband, because there are men who have smart, I, I'm very cynical, I'm very condescending. So mine is not as harsh, but it's, it's very passive aggressive kind of smart mouth. Actually, so, to be honest, I think Derek's is a little bit more harsh because nobody sees it coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they think he's unassuming. So then when he says it, people are like, whoa, <laughs> you know? But I, I mean, I feel like I created that monster. Yes. I personally feel like I did. So think about your marriage for a minute. Think about the fights that you've gotten into. Think about how you have 
how you got to that war zone, how you picked up your, your guns and your weapons of choice and you can't get out of it. You're, you're locked in and you can't get out of it. So we're talking about how, how do you fight fear in marriage? And I don't know if that's a, is that easy for some people or difficult? I think once you get into a fight, you can't fight fear. I think all bets are off. You know, well, I think we we used to believe that. I think that once you establish self control and a, and self awareness, you can actually implement what we call the rules of engagement. And I think that's important before you get to that point in the argument or in the fight. Um, understanding what your triggers might be, saying how you feel before it escalates to that point. And I know it seems real, you know, bravado ish. But truly, when you're married and you're so different, you almost have to slow it down frame by frame so that you can say, maybe you didn't mean to sound insulting, but I felt insulted when you said that. As opposed to taking that feeling of feeling insulted and then retaliating verbally or in an action. I think, I think uh, a skilled person can do that. I think most of our viewers are unable to do that. I think most of the viewers have to go baby steps by baby. I think we're able to do that now because we're emotionally intimate. We don't have things in our cup. Mm -hmm. Our cup is not dealing with daddy issues or past control issues. I mean, I, our cup is empty. So if we, have to, if we have to take baby steps, if your cup is not empty from other previous things, then you're going to get into a place where Sonya is suggesting you won't be able to get out because mm -hmm. a lot of resentment's in there, a lot of hurt is still in the cup. So, you know, getting to that place, when you say rules of engagement, maybe you can talk more about what are the rules of engagement, because engagement, I think people have to know how to create rules of engagement, mm -hmm. give some examples of what are the rules of engagement. So at least they'll know to pause and say, okay, these are, we're, we're going, we're crossing enemy lines because there's no rules of engagement, right? And we're mm -hmm. just going all out. Mm -hmm. So what do you suggest some of the rules of engagement would be? Well, I think the first one is recognizing that you're in conflict. At some point, you got to recognize that. Whether you say it or you, you, you recognize it internally, you've got to say, okay, we're about to be in conflict or we are in conflict. And then the second thing is when you're discussing rules of engagement, they shouldn't be discussed while you're in the conflict. They need to be discussed when you're at peace. And they have those peace treaties and all that time that, 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 that the, 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 op the opposing sides are at peace. They're creating treaties so that when there might be war or there might be some dissension, you're falling to those peace treaties. So I think marriage is the same way. You have to be able to come up with some ways to engage. So for example, when Derek and I used to cope poorly with our coping mechanisms, we had to speak to what those poor coping mechanisms were when we weren't in conflict. Case in point, Derek would say, um, when we're in conflict, I need you to watch your perimeter around me. Don't get in my face. Uh, don't use profanity or call me out of my name. I would say, when we're in conflict, you can't leave and just disappear and go somewhere out of the house. Um, you can't throw furniture or hit property. And those were our rules of engagement. And we said that when we were at peace so that we didn't have to be defensive and respond, you know, in a negative way. We could actually hear what the other person was saying they needed. It's just like in sports, there's a referee who has a whistle and the referee blows the whistle and he says, okay, let's stop. And he goes back and says, remember we talked about the rules at the beginning of the game, mm -hmm. you know, Boxing, they talk about the, the rules when the two boxers come into the middle. No hitting below the belt, no biting the ear, uh -huh. no rabbit punches. And they say, okay, and they agree to it, and they break, they go to the corner, the bell rings, and they come out to fight. That's what Sonya's talking about. We're talking about having a conversation and saying, okay, I know I curse. I need not to curse when we get into that place. I know uh, I get in your face. I shouldn't get in your face. I don't get in my face. I know, so talk about those things and then when it happens, at least your mind is communicating to that feeling and saying, okay, I'm angry, but I'm not gonna curse. Mm -hmm. I'm angry, but I'm not gonna get in the face. I'm angry, I'm not gonna walk away and throw something you know, against the wall. So 
That's why you have to have a conversation about the rules of engagement before you get into it. Because when you get into it, all bets are off except for the rules. And if you honestly can't honor those things, I don't know how you're functioning in your marriage because you have to honor rules at work. You have to honor rules in the traffic um, laws when you're driving. You have to honor rules even at church, in the courthouse, you know, wherever you go, in the grocery store, you got to wait on li in line. There are rules everywhere. So if you can't come up with some rules of engagement in your marriage and honor them, then something's really wrong. It means that you're dishonoring that institution because you, you most people, except the anti-social personality people, most people honor the rules everywhere else. So why aren't we able to honor the ones that we, we establish in our marriage? And here's the third um, rule of engagement is how to re-engage. So if you have taken some separation from each other so that you can calm down, wind down, rethink, process, especially the internal people, they have to process internally and you come back, you've got to be able to come back and say, what, can we talk? That's the name of our vlog for a reason. Can we talk about what happened last right. night? That question is a very passive, innocent question. Not, not like, come in and just do passive aggressive things, you know, move stuff around and slam a door. And you really want to talk. Right. You know, walk into their space, but not say anything. Turn the TV up loud, but not say anything. Sit next to them and, and, and you know, trying to get their attention without saying, all right, look, can we talk? And that's it. And then allow the other person to respond. All right, or no, or mm -hmm. give me a minute. Um, that's a reasonable way to to re-engage is to ask that question can we talk yeah yeah so I came I think those, those are the three main rules of engagement recognizing you're in conflict um, having a peace treaty conversation and learning how to re-engage mm -hmm. yeah you know I was thinking about how it gets to a point where it gets volatile uh, we we've, we've had so many different um, scenarios that have been presented to us where it's gotten volatile mm. it, for both parties, male and female, and it's gotten physical. Mm, 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 mm. At some point, there needs to be a, a stop in the process and say, okay, we need some help because your anger has gotten to a place where it's gotten physical. Um, mm. Oh, can I say something about that? You sure can. Okay, as Derek was talking, Here's one of my issues, wives. Please don't square up on your husband and initiate physical contact first. And then don't expect that he's not gonna have a physical reaction because of reflex and testosterone. So many times, you know, the wives come into these sessions with us and they say that their husband was physical and immediately people think domestic violence, oh, this man should be lynched and hung and and prosecuted but he didn't throw the first blow and usually the blow after that is in defense of the first blow or a reflex of the first blow and then the wife doesn't say oh well i hit him first or if you say you hit him first you don't take responsibility if he reflexes and strikes you back. And I am not saying that that's okay. But what I am saying is don't throw the first blow and not expect a reflex reaction. Cause that happens a lot in marriages. And I just feel so angry about the fact that that's unfair. It's unfair to, to, to size up a man, get in his space, hit him first. And I mean, most men are controlled enough to walk away. Yes. But some men have a history of physical abuse. Some men have a history of being the victim on the other side. And by reflex, they're gonna strike back. So just be careful with that. Don't think that you can do and beat up your husband and, 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 and physically attack him and expect no consequences. You're gonna get some and take responsibility for that. That level of altercation is horrible. It's not acceptable. But when it happens, take some responsibility for that, wives. Please, please. That's a big issue of mine. I had to blow the whistle on that one. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, I'm going to say something to the men mm -hmm. on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. I'm in agreement, agreement with that. Oh, men. <laughs> <I'm sure. sighs> I, I have to really 
be calm about this. If you have the urge to put your hands on your wife, I suggest that you leave the house. Mm. I suggest that you walk away. If you have a history of domestic violence, you need to call 1-800-DOMESTIC-VIOLENCE and get some help. And maybe that's not the number, but you can Google the number. You need to go to an anger management program. You need to seek some help mm -hmm. because you have a problem. Mm -hmm. You have a serious problem. And it probably goes back to when you grew up. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's so important that if you have the tendency, and if you are hitting or touching or physically abusing your wife, you need to stop. And this is coming from one man to a little boy. Because that's what you are mm. if you put your hands on a female. You know where to find me if I hurt your feelings. Nobody's scared of you. I'm sincere about that because, mm. you know, it's, it's no place for a man to put his hands on a female. I don't care how severe it gets, you walk away. Okay, that's our little, what do you call it? Spill. Spill. <laughs> okay, so we But you know, there are, I, I know, I, you know, let that sit and, 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 and marinate. Yeah. But there are domestic violent women too. Yeah. And there are men who don't who strike back. And they are victims of domestic, domestic violence as well. Yeah. So, we're, you know, we're, we're not just honing in on the men, but if the shoe fits man, wear that thing. I was about to say. And if it fits, I have to say if it to fits the men, wife, wear that thing. Because there we, are some women that batter their husbands. Yeah, the, the, the marriage is no place to be domestically violent anyway. That's right. Here, on that's both, right. both there's sides. There's a problem that's bigger there's, than there's that. There's a problem bigger than just yeah. somebody did something. So seek some help with that situation. Please. And especially if you have children in the house and they're seeing that. Yeah. Ooh, don't get me started. It, go, it goes mm. a lot deeper mm -hmm. than that. So, um, The results of the child and how that impacts the child emotionally is grave. Yeah, well, the child, the children will be great. our clients when they get 20, 22 years old. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that. To yeah, happen. so even yeah. if you if you can't control yourself for yourself, control yourself for your child. Just take it over. Please do that. Do it. Bam. Okay, so what are you doing? That's how we, we won. All your little men were won. We won. No, I won a court. No, no, we won the fight. Oh, we won the. F I thought you meant O N E. You meant W O N. No, W N. W O N. Yeah. But nobody won. Everybody's all mixed up in there. Yeah. <laughs> this this topic we just wanted to come up with because we just feel the need to have a, a a conversation about fighting in marriage and there's no room to fight but we do know the reality of it is that couples get upset there's conflict there's issues but when it gets to that point you know you have to learn how to fight fair mm -hmm. you have to learn how to withdraw yourself you have to learn how to recognize the signs and the triggers before you get to that point um, there's still times where Sonya really and truly gets on my everlasting glob stop of the nerve and vice versa. And we've in these situations that happen now, they're no different on the things that happened 24 years ago. Right. We just learned how to deal with it. They're the same. They're the same things. Yeah. We just learned how to empty our cups and learn how to know our triggers and learn how to uh, have rules in place so they don't happen so that we won't go into that place again so and i think you know on the other side of that too there are some um, couples that don't say anything at all and so you think that you're okay and there is a such a thing as good conflict and bad conflict and i think that those that don't do say anything at all don't really know how to have healthy conflict i you should don't. say not bad or good healthy and unhealthy I rephrase that. And I think um, healthy conflict is where conflict is where you can actually disagree and end the disagreement with both minds and hearts on one accord. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna always agree. You might have to agree to disagree because you're different. But that's still healthy conflict versus unhealthy conflict where you say nothing or you go in and fight physically. So you have two extremes, saying nothing and then afflicting um, physical injury. That's a good point. Thank you very much. You just love that gun, don't you? So, how to fight fair. Fighting is okay if you do it in a healthy way. It's called healthy conflict. Please identify when you're in conflict. 
Please identify your rules of engagement and please re-engage in a healthy way. Right. So now that you know what, what you're, you're going to do, do with it. it. We might have stirred up some stuff for some of you watchers. Well, you know our number. What do we stir up? Just feelings that come with conflict. Things I said. Things you said. I think what we said was, was on point. Yeah, but it's still a conflictual conversation. So now that you know. What you're going to do with do it. Do something with it. Call us for help. We do mediation too. Right. Which is a little bit different from counseling. Mm -hmm. And um, we thank you for watching. Make sure you share this one, especially if you know someone yeah. who's in a domestic violence situation or if you know someone or a couple who is struggling with putting hands on the other. Right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And until Hold next button. time, take good care of yourselves. Bye. Thank you for watching and um, make sure to subscribe and like and comment if it helped you in any ways or if you're going to apply whatever my parents said. And you know, just remember, just now remember. that you know what, what you're going to do, do with it. it. I did watch the video.